Hello, um, I'm Charles Poe, um, manager of discrete computation at Wolfram Research and uh, the lead developer of uh, Unity Link. So uh, today I'm going to actually present you uh, Unity Link, which is a new feature in the Wolfram language in version 12. And essentially, well, if I want to summarize it in short, is essentially a connection from the Wolfram, Wolfram language or the Wolfram engine to the Unity engine, the game object, the quite popular game object for 2D and 3D AR and VR development. So, and it's a bidirectional link. So you can actually, from the Wolfram language, connect to Unity and from Unity call the Wolfram language. As you can imagine, that means from the Wolfram language, you can type to all the nice feature of Unity and from Unity, you can essentially act, you know, access all the feature from the Wolfram language. So what I will do in the next uh, 30 minutes or so, I will go and show you the different feature and essentially the key idea behind that motivation as well as what we, you know, we think it's quite useful to have that link. So I'll go to a set of examples we have in our marketing page. So I will first, um, you know, show the nice feature of that integration. And after that, I will talk about uh, the Wolfram, also example from the Wolfram language to Unity, and then from Unity to the Wolfram language, how you can call it. And I will also show a couple of nice example where uh, we show how you can, for example, easily learn to write a game, you know, in a couple of lines. And also I will show you the, you know, set of example and documentation we put in place, you know, so that it's easy for you to, you know, just start to use a Unity link. Okay, so, well, let's first start up front. Um, so essentially what we try to do is to, you know, just make it easy and simple, you know. So you take, you know, Mathematica, or uh, the Wolfram engine, you have it on your computer, desktop, you download Unity. If you have both, on, both system in, uh, in, on your computer, all you have to do is essentially run need Unity in the Wolfram language. So you, know, you load that package, it will automatically connect to our server if you need to get an update. And directly after that, you have uh, the connection. So we automatically detect the location of Unity on your machine. And if you just do a Unity open, for example, it will automatically open Unity. And in this example, I show how you can do Unity open of an example will come with the package, as well as you just do Unity play and automatically play. So this is a nice game you have, you know, in the package, just a basic standard rolling ball, volleyball. So the key idea is to provide essentially a, you know, seamless and automated way to launch Unity from the Wolfram language. So you can actually directly start to work. So behind the scene, we actually make all the connection to, you know, our Matlink and .NET framework so that, you know, both system can communicate. So we automate all that, automated all that part quite simply and nicely for you. So when you have already that connection, right, between the Wolfram language and Unity, well, one key idea is that, you know, the Wolfram language provides you a power, powerful scripting environment for Unity, right? So you don't basically just have to get stuck in the interface, you know, drag and drop and clicking. You can essentially, you know, start from the Wolfram language and build your game. So this is an example of a game we have. So you just do a need Unity again, you launch Unity from the Wolfram language and you can launch Unity from two way. You know, you can launch Unity the editor or you can also launch it in background and you still have the same interaction. So launch Unity in this case, launch it in background. Here we open a scene and here, for example, we access the ball and the controller of the ball, you know, which is one game object in Unity. And you can just do Unity play and you will automatically play the game. So in this case, the game is playing on background and you can just in the Wolfram language do a dynamic of Unity um, camera image. As you know, we have a camera image in the Wolfram language which actually access to your camera. We introduce a similar one, Unity camera image, which actually access to the window of Unity. 
So if you do a dynamic of it, you will actually in uh, real time get back all what you have in Unity on your Wolfram language notebook. So this kind of show you that, you know, we have a nice tight integration between both system and a set of, you know, nice utility. So from the Wolfram language, you can roughly script your game, and essentially be creative and do whatever you want. So let's look at the next case, which is essentially the fact of having those two links, you know, kind of open you the door to, you know, be extremely creative as I pointed out. So you can take a game, for example, you can modify it quite easily, change, you know, the geometry of object in your game, you know, in your game, you can monitor your game, you can do testing, debugging, and, you know, all those nice things, you, you know, which kind of hard to do, you know, if you just use the IDE. So in this example, we still take that uh, roller ball. You know, we, you know, we use our capability in geometry in the Wolfram language, we generate a bunch of polyhedron, we pick one, and we just do a, you know, create unity um, mesh on that polyhedron. So that geometric object in the Wolfram language, and then we take it automatically and then push it to unity. And in this case, we call unity build. It actually automatically builds and executable for you. You can actually play. So this is an example of that uh, game you actually play. So you can build it as an executable on your desktop, or you can essentially all you know just generate an actual WebGL uh, executable and run it on the web, which is kind of what we have here in our marketing page. So as I said also, you see, we have, for example, Unity Build, which automatically builds your game. We have Unity Play, which automatically play and a nice set of utility around uh, Unity. Okay. One additional set of feature we also try to do is essentially when you're on Unity, you know, if you want to call back the Wolfram language, you can just use the existing editor. So the Unity editor. So as soon as you open Unity, you open a project which is automatically connect back to the Wolfram language, you will get an additional um, menu, the Wolfram menu, like you can see up here. And from that menu, you can you know, automatically call back the Wolfram language, add the Wolfram uh, object to connect back to the Wolfram language and such. I will talk a little bit about that uh, later on in details. But in this uh, example, we kind of try to show you that from the Wolfram language also, you can actually manipulate the menu, the editor menu in Unity, right? Because essentially what we did is that we, we kind of type under Unity and we have pretty much full control of the, the engine. So here we do a Unity token execute. So essentially you'll automatically go and open a, you know, essentially uh, click on that menu on Unity from the Wolfram language. And you can essentially add components like that. So you don't have to be in front of your editor and you know, click you know, one sequence after that, you can roughly script it. So you, for example, you can do Unity token execute play and you'll go and actually play your game too. And we have object like Unity current value, which gives you the state of the game, or you can actually manipulate the state of the game that way. So this example just show you how deeply integrated both systems are. So you can actually, from the Wolfram language, control Unity, write some nice script, and you know build your game and do other things. So let's start to see essentially, you know, with a few examples, what actually the Wolfram language bring to Unity. So. Obviously, we have the full algorithmic power of the Wolfram language, we know you have available. So you can essentially generate geometry. So you can do a lot of content generation. And all you have to do when you have a geometry, and in this case, a, you know, a nice 3D object we generate using our revolution plot. So as soon as you have that object, you can just do a create unity game object. We give it a name and the graphic and we automatically push it to Unity. So we automatically take that geometric object, you know, discretize it, 
do polygon simplification, reduce it, and push it to Unity. So essentially, that means you have a, an infinite number of geometric objects you can access or you can create yourself from the Wolfram language and push it to Unity. So if you want to create content for your game or for just some basic application, you can just first do that in the Wolfram language and in one line, you push it to Unity. And also you can tap to our large, you know, volume of curated 3D object from, you know, anatomical object to real world, topographic and terrain we have in the Wolfram language. So this is an example where essentially we take a skull, you get the geometric object, we call it region, and then you just do create Unity game object, and then you have it in Unity. So you have that actually 3D object in Unity. So generation of content gets quite, quite easy, you know, if you have the Wolfram engine connected to your Unity, or you work from the Wolfram language, the Wolfram engine, and push, you know, object to Unity. So another example is essentially also still in that same direction of uh, content generation. You can, you know, use the Wolfram language to search, you know, audio, you know, besides just 3D geometry. For you, again, maybe you want to add sound, music, or essentially synthesize algorithmically, you know, some of your audio object. So from the Wolfram language, which uh, I think the, you know, the whole audio framework we introduced in version 12, you can take it and manipulate your audio. In this case, we are you know, looking for sound of a ghost. Right. You can take it, change it. Um, well, I don't know if it's going through the connection, but there is a sound, a, you, know, we, you know, increase the pitch there of the sound. And you can just do create Unity audio clip. You give it the name of the file and automatically you have that uh, file object in Unity. And as I say, there's also a bidirection, um, bidirectional link. So if you have an object in Unity, you can just do a normal back in the Wolfram language and you get back that audio file or you get that audio file from Unity to the Wolfram language. And then you can start to manipulate it. So in short, from the Wolfram language, you have full access to Unity. The Unity scene, the Unity game object, the component, the asset, as well as any low level object in Unity. And that's actually extremely powerful, right? So that means you can pretty much control the whole Unity engine from the Wolfram language. So here I will just show a basic example, you know, where we want to, you know, just build this, um, basic animation of a ball falling, right? So you can do that in a couple of lines from the Wolfram language. And that's kind of a nice way of it. Actually, you can, you know, teach concept of game programming to, you know, to people. So we come up here, you just do a Unity, need Unity, you create a new project. And then first you create a scene. So you do create Unity scene, you create a scene. After that, you just create, you know, the different object you need for such a scene of, you know, for the ball, you need, you know, the material. So you need a natural texture. So you read it from, you know, our example data, you have a collection of texture, you know, stone wall, for example, or metallic texture. So you take those objects and do create Unity texture 2D. We take those, you know, texture in the Wolfram language and then we push it to Unity. After that, you create a plane and the ball. So create Unity plane will create the plane. Create Unity sphere will create the ball, the sphere actually. After that, you just have to add the collider and set up some basic, you know, parameter, the Euler angle, as well as the material and such. And after that, you just do create a unity rigid body. So we'll go and create that component and you'll attach it to that uh, sphere directly. And then you just play unit, you just, you know, evaluate unity play and then you get that nice animation. So in a few lines, you can actually easily do that animation and you can actually easily explain the concept of what you are doing than just, you know, a click and drag and drop. So that's, 
one powerful aspect of this connection between unity and the Wolfram language. And well, as you all know, you know, usually when we design objects in the system, we try to make them consistent. And you know, here all you have to just keep in mind is the general design. So we have a unity scene, which is the whole environment, is a, an object which presents the scene actually in unity. We have unity game object, and then after that you have the component, unity mesh, and such. And each object and component will come with a function to create it. So we call it create unity scene, for example, a function to find it or a function to delete it. So create unity scene, find unity scene or delete unity scene. And so we keep that consistency in the design for all the objects in the system. Right. Okay. So now let's look, you know, we talk about, you know, from the Wolfram language to Unity. Now, now let's look from Unity to the Wolfram language. So if you're familiar with Unity or you work with Unity, you can actually call the Wolfram language behind the scene. You can roughly have your Wolfram engine installed. And from Unity, you can call it and connect to it, right? So this is an example where essentially we write from Unity, essentially, you want to do this basic animation of, you know, we build a globe, you know, based on a set of coordinates. So if you have the polygon of the coordinates, you can essentially build the globe and build the boundary of different countries that way. So what essentially we did is, um, you know, we create, you know, the base module in Unity. But we needed the data actually. So how to get the data, the boundary of the polygon and draw them. So you can take the file or in, in our case, it's quite easy since we have the Wolfram engine, we just need to call the Wolfram engine from Unity. So up here, we actually showed you, you know, some of the additional code we actually have. So essentially from Unity, we have a, a Unity game object which call Wolfram, uh, Wolfram engine. And from it, you know, we have method like, you know, Wolfram evaluate, where you can just pass it a string of the Wolfram language and you automatically call the Wolfram engine and return you back the appropriate um, object. So we do the right conversion of type casting and management automatically for you. So if you push a geometric object, um, for example, from Unity, you say, well, Wolfram, engine, can you create me a, a polygon of a sphere? We will return you an actual unity mesh, right? With the right uh, parameter and stuff set up. So we do the whole complete automation behind the scene. So in this example, you managed to actually build that quite nicely. So one additional feature is also, like I said, you know, is the connection between the you know Unity and Wolfram Wolfram engine, and that was on desktop, but you can also connect to the Wolfram cloud to the cloud API we have. So we have actually code already available, and you can actually call uh, embedded code in the Wolfram language to do that. Oh, let me see. Sorry, I need to adjust my window here. There we go. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Oops. There we go. Oops. Okay. Well, so essentially, we have the connection from the so essentially, if Unity, you can connect to the Wolfram engine on desktop, or you can connect to the Wolfram cloud to our cloud API. And so we have already all the library and all the module in place. So in one line, you can just call our cloud API, same as you call the Wolfram engine on desktop. So this example also just show, shows that. Um, so essentially, we just want to roughly build a globe 
and in real time get information. In this case, we, we build a globe, we get the GDP, the population and the name. So what we do is that we call the Wolfram Cloud API, which have all those data from our Wolfram knowledge base. And then we feed it back to your game in real time. So the code is quite simple. So the first part actually just uh, find you know, geo nearest the position because you actually click. And we use embedded code to automatically generate the code to Unity, which you will actually compile and we do the connection to our Cloud API. And here, this is just essentially the call to our Cloud API. So it does automatically the connection for you and generate you the white C-sharp code, which will call that Cloud API. And all you have to do is just to sit on the cloud API and then just write that basic code, which return the GDP, the capital or whatever information you need. So in other words, you actually have access, real time, real data, real world data available quite easily. If you use the Wolfram cloud or the Wolfram engine in general, and you can feed it to your game to make them more realistic. Okay. As I pointed out earlier also, right? So from the Unity editor, you know, you have access to the, you know, we add actually a Wolfram menu there and they actually give you uh, access to generating object from, you know, the Wolfram language or connecting to the Wolfram language or actually having control of the Wolfram engine, you know, running behind the scene. Um, some part of, I mean, the context menu also have, you know, two entries, you know, the Wolfram package and the Wolfram notebook. So you can actually, in your asset directory in Unity, you can actually add a Wolfram code. And what we do is we automatically evaluate it every time and push it to the Wolfram engine and update the Wolfram engine with that. So you don't have to have separate code. So in your project, your project can be consistent. You can have your C-sharp code as well as some Wolfram code for initialization or generation or some automation you want to put in place. So we read it automatically and scan your asset directory. So this has kind of all nice usability feature we, you know, we put in place. Okay. Well, one other additional, like, you know, nice feature we kind of prototype, you know, and, you know, didn't push too far, but it's more uh, the ability to use our Wolfram data drop. So you can essentially, you know, have your game running and you just want to log your game, different state of your game. When somebody open a scene, when somebody, uh, you know, the character move and the position and such. So we have um, essentially a, a Wolfram um, game object. We call it Wolfram log you can add to your scene and connect it to a data bin, which is on the Wolfram data drop side. So this is an example where we create a data bin. We find a component in the Unity and then we attach it to that data bin. And then we just play the game. As we play the game, we automatically push the data. So the Unity link or the Wolfram asset behind automatically push the data. When somebody open a scene, somebody move or the main player character moves to some position, we record all that and push it to the data, um, our data drop. And from the Wolfram language, you can do, just do, you know, data set of that bin and then you actually have the data. So the session, the time, and uh, the different action and the timestamp of when those actions happen. And then you can just take that and use, you know, some of visual visualization function to actually have a nice timeline, in this case, plot of that data. So this kind of open access to, you know, data analytic of your game, as well as, you know, any other statistic you want to compute or for debugging or for other purposes for your game. 
So it's actually quite powerful. So it's, you know, this is one feature we just try once and, you know, offer there, you know, depending on the feedback, we'll see if we want to actually push it further and such. Okay, so that's a lot. Um, so, well, before we jump to the last part, what I just want to point out is some of the quite interesting uh, potential, you know, Unity uh, link bring, um, you know, you to you as a user. So one thing is one key thing is right uh, game testing. So you can do development from you know your development prototyping to actually fully testing. You can actually do that in the Wolfram language or with the Wolfram language. So this example will show how actually you can actually monitor your game while somebody play and in real time have that dynamic in the Wolfram language and see the position of the person, record it, um, do all the manipulation from the Wolfram language. So that's quite powerful, especially if you know if you're a game, big game studio and you want to do testing and you have a bunch of people around and you want to record and control things and script actually some of the process in your testing or development even, you can use the Wolfram language for that. So on the other side is also, you know, if you are in education or you want just to learn how to do game programming, you know, you can just start with the Wolfram language. You know, it's quite easy, you know, name a sample, the logic is simple, and you can actually build easily things from the Wolfram language and generate a game. So it's perfect environment for, to learn how to do game development. And especially if you want to go even next, you know, just be, you know, not just, you know, building a basic game, but you want, for example, to explain the math behind the geometry, or you want to use the latest tool, machine learning, or deep learning, or do some image processing. You can actually all do that in the Wolfram language, right? And quite easily just push it to your game or present those concepts to someone. So it's, it's quite powerful for that, uh, in that aspect. And one last feature we, you know, I like to point out is that you can actually generate a game purely independently from the Wolfram language. You, you know, if you build assets in the Wolfram language, you push it to Unity, you know, there is no link back. So you can actually just compile your game. But in some case you may, you know, prototype some code in the Wolfram language to do something specific and you want that code to be in Unity. So in version 12, you actually have a new compiler fantastic compiler so you can actually use it compile your code from the wolfram language into a dll and then attach it as a native dll in your unity game so this example actually just show you how you can do that right you can just write your code in the wolfram language you create in well create unity library of your code in this case you have a random generator there and it will automatically generate you the dll the dynamic library at the right location in your asset directory under the plugin. And you can just, roughly speaking, call it from Unity, right? So that aspect is also then covered that you can actually write code from the Wolfram language and integrate it to your game. And obviously, when you talk about Unity and, you know, you think about VR and AR, right? So Unity have, a whole fantastic package to actually uh, generate, you know, via and air and, you know, applications, right? So now it's just a matter of generate the content and the rest. So, well, if you come to the Wolfram language, it's perfect for that, right? So in this case, we actually show you how we just build a, a whole gallery of a storyline of the Wolfram research company based on, you know, Stephen Wolfram, the founder, he have a scratch book on the web. So we essentially collected those image and then we built this whole um, VR experience based on that data. We push it to Unity, the image, the audio, the sound, right? And essentially you can essentially easily do that in the Wolfram language. But also what we try to do is also to kind of show you in real time some animation, like we plug it to our machine learning, where you can you know you can do digit detection and such. 
right? So what we want to show essentially is that if you want to build your application via our AR application and you want contain, well, the best place is to use the Wolfram language. You can easily generate contain algorithmically and such. Okay, well, I talked about the key feature, you know, we bring Unitil, you know, Unitilink bring, but, you know, from the Wolfram language to Unity or from Unity the Wolfram language. Right. So before I close, what I want to also talk about is, you know, all the material we put so that you can easily start to play with Unitilink. So we have a bunch of, uh, you know, a whole set of uh, workflow and example available. So in product or actually online. So you can just go there and just open the notebook. So in this case, this is a basic example to, you know, you just build the rain of spiky falling with different light. So this is available on the website, but also in product. So you can just take it, evaluate it, and you have a game. And you can even take it, start to change it, and, you know, start to build your game. So we have a, you know, large collection of such. And we also have been writing blogs explaining how we can actually, you can actually build more advanced uh, game or module using the Wolfram language. And one of it was um, the piano, how you can actually build a virtual piano, right? If you go on Google there on the, on the web virtual piano, you'll find, you know, several page of those. So you can actually easily build that in the Wolfram language. And we have a blog which actually shows that. So, okay. Well, and also we have an extensive documentation. So we have a main guide page in product which uh, explain your Unity, the architecture and the design and such. Unity link, I should say. And you can go from it. There are example in each page and you can easily learn how to use Unity link. And start be creative and you know build fantastic object and application with the Wolfram language and unity okay well so that's uh, pretty much what uh, I wanted to present today so this is the first release of unity link and we hope in the future version of the Wolfram language we are going to add more component more automation you know to make a lot of process easy from building 3D application game to AR, VR, or using machine learning and such. Well, I hope, uh, you know, you enjoy Unity, you play with it, uh, Unity Link, and, you know, we are open for feedback and uh, receive from there. So thank you for your time. <laughs>